about this quickly this is courtesy of one granary and they posted this really interesting and divisive and really contentious post regarding um the recent appointment of sean mcgree or sean mcgear sorry at um alexander mcqueen and the post is following it says the follows right it's a little caption they put together sean mcgear is replacing sarah berta as anna mcqueen these are the caring's creative directors and it features everybody from the caring group who's the creative director there and basically they're all very very white and i guess the caption also kind of speaks a bit more on it and this is as follows with the appointment of sean mcgear at alexander mcqueen all the creative directors at caring fashion houses are now white men the quote says i literally don't know a single woman of my generation even approached for a job like this a senior designer shared after the news that the head of men's at jw anderson would succeed sarah burton started circulating another quote all these women have given up everything to service men pay 10 times their salary Another woman designer shared her frustration with us. It is insulting to every woman working in the industry, not him being appointed, but having a full portfolio headed by men. We hear so much about quote unquote change, while diversity and equality are used as a marketing strategy every day. But in truth, nothing seems to have evolved. The quote, I think so many women just give up because of the route is so impossible. This appointment proved it. It is high time we engage with a difficult conversation about why these decisions keep repeating themselves in the industry and what factors perpetuate this pattern and why actual change remains so elusive. Now, this is an interesting topic for me because being a aspiring DJ in my kind of field that I'm in on the genre that I kind of, you know, specifically want to get involved in, which is house and techno, I view this from a very different lens also because it's kind of an interesting parallel. Right, hear me out. So I've seen within my journey in the scene over the years that although I have a very good understanding of the music, I'm a really competent and good DJ. I've been around for a while. I know how to play. I know the parties, all the stuff. I'm, blah, blah, blah. I'm still very down on the pecking order of people and priorities when it comes to certain opportunities because I happen to be a black straight male. And I feel like, unfortunately for me, even though I tick some diversity, inclusivity boxes, I'm not viewed that way just because I don't lean a particular way. Even though I'm, you know, I'm very open to going to most of these parties. I go to them all the time. I'm always championing a lot of them, which doesn't mean I deserve to play them, don't get me wrong. But just more so that, you know, I don't really have an issue at all with that community at all. I don't really look at it that way. I just look at the good parties and I try to attend them. And obviously, you know, whatever I can attend and take part in, I will take part in. But I've noticed definitely in the hierarchy or in the totem pole of opportunities, I definitely fall right down the bottom, maybe just above, you know, what you deem to be called white cis men i'm definitely probably above them but i'm definitely one of the last ones that would probably try to get picked or get an opportunity to play somewhere which is a real shame but then i think about it on the sense of if i was a white cis male and i was in the djing field i would also feel a bit annoyed because for the longest time there was a real stranglehold on the DJing opportunities and the scene that existed. I think it's the same now, to be fair. I don't think anything has really changed, even though it's all like inclusive and whatnot and POC friendly and LGBTQ this. It's still the same 10 to 20 LGBTQ centric DJs playing at the same parties, whether it's Infernos, whether it's Budokai or whatever. It's still the same top 20 ones, really and truly. Um, so it hasn't really changed in, if anything, it's just they just replaced the top with another type of top, um, you know, no pun intended. But I think if I was a white cis male, I'd feel a little bit aggrieved because for the longest time, a particular group of white cis males, like the Marco Carollas, the Ricardo Villalobos, the Richie, all these type of dudes, they had a stranglehold on all the opportunities. You couldn't play if you weren't those type of dudes or you weren't on their level. Then all the Jamie Foxes and Jamie Fox, sorry, the Jamie Joneses, the Seth Chocolas, um, all these type of dudes come around and they have a stranglehold on opportunities. So you can't have opportunities anymore. Now there's a whole entire scene coming up of this guy called Jaden Thompson, a few other people coming up, and they have a stranglehold on it. But they have a stranglehold on it. They also tick diversity boxes. So if you're a white cis male, you don't really have an opportunity to come through because they're trying to push a particular type of person forward and make it de and make the scene look like it's more inclusive and diverse than what it actually is so the problem that exists i feel like and the same problem that exists in fashion is not that 
it's not inclusive it's just that it's not really interesting when it comes to hiring i think most of these people that have been hired so far that we're seeing on this list on this kind of square this graphic they've got on here for each group uh, i can recognize um I can recognize the designer for Bottega Veneta. I recognize the designer for Balenciaga. The designer, I'm not really sure who the other ones are. I think this is the one for Gucci. And I don't know who the other three are. But essentially, all these designers, if I'm not mistaken, are all people who worked behind the scenes in fashion. Like you have the guy that's been approached now or has got the job now for Alexander McQueen was well, the head of men's were J.W. Anderson. So somebody that is well known to people behind the scenes. He's definitely got a lot of, you know, um, got a lot of kind of reputation, got a great reputation probably you'd imagine for his work. Definitely high regarded. And now he's getting given the opportunity to, you know, perform on the high stage. That's what we should be promoting because now it gives kids in fashion schools the hope that if they do go work underneath somebody, they could also be the head of, alexander mcqueen when before it was oh you have to be a celebrity designer you have to be well known like a virgil to get those type of jobs now the industry is showing you that hey if you actually grind and you're just there in the background pattern cutting and shit you may be able to get one of these higher jobs it's actually a good thing so the issue is that the industry has moved so slow in promoting people who actually have knowledge of what they're doing have the expertise have the education then now they're at loggerheads because they took so long to employ people in the design studio who deserve those jobs just as much as any high-flying celebrity designer that now the diversity arguments come about they're having to do two things at once they're having to address trying to lift up voices and people within the industry who don't who get overlooked and they're also having to be inclusive and diverse to reflect the amount of people that are into the stuff that they do so it's a weird situation to be in but when it comes to the women thing it's a bit hard because i remember that one time ages ago where i was randomly cycling through centering central london i my bike got a puncture and i happened to end up outside vogue house and i didn't know what vogue house was before i was in front of it i ended up in there i ended up outside of there trying to fix my bike and at the same time i was trying to fix my bike with a puncture the fire alarm in vogue house went off and all of these girls that work in Vogue House came out. I just remember being there thinking, rah, bro, all these fucking girls and thinking, shit, hot girl, hot girl, in my head, right? I was thinking, hold on, is this Vogue House? That's the Vogue, oh, that's the Vogue head office. Shit. And then the second thing that puts in my head, was like, rah, boy, there's a lot of white girls in there, isn't it? Like, it was crazy. Like, again, my brain doesn't think that way usually, but I couldn't help but notice how many of the same type of, you know, Labrook Grove, Notting Hill type of white woman that was pouring out of Vogue House. I was like, oh my God, bro. That is really interesting. It's like hardly anybody else that does not look like that in their office. A very particular type of white person. I was like, shit. Okay, that's weird. So, most likely again i haven't worked in the background of fashion i've been a fan all my life of course i've collected magazines i've gone to shows i've been part of different whatever but i've never really worked in the industry industry but i would assume much like you know casting and stuff most likely the fashion industry is probably predominantly full of women predominantly right predominantly in every aspect in every level so it's really difficult to sit here with a straight face and say that there's not a lot of opportunities for women when the entire industry is full of them yes maybe the high level opportunities the ones at the top aren't going to some women that's obviously unfortunate but it is a kind of a, a privilege issue really it's not really an issue that i feel like is encompassing of the work industry overall because there's not an abundance of women out here who are fighting you know men to get fucking construction jobs right they want certain jobs only and again the balance needs to be restored i understand that but it's a very tricky situation because if you then say hey we want more women to get these type of jobs why can't a black straight guy like me get a, that kind of job either why don't i get involved in the situation why am i then now at the same level or if not underneath or maybe above you know your kind of um white male type of figure person it's a strange place to go in so it kind of gets into thinking of like in the end the only way to deal with these sort of issues the fair way is to just say we're not going to hire people based on their sex or their race we're going to base hire people based on their talent and their ability to do the job which doesn't happen nowadays because of social media because of whatever it's just not a thing that happens so that's obviously mute but that's the only way to deal with this fairly because if you start doing the diversity quota store of things, it can get very murky. It can get very contentious very, very, very quickly. 
that made me think of like figuring out or typing on google oh what is diversity in it like what, what is the point of all that who started this whole thing right why do we need to have workplaces that look you know multicultural and shit like what's the point of all this so i randomly stumbled on this article that kind of delves on it a little bit this is courtesy of a website called diversity.social it says why diversity is important so let's read a little bit of the articles and see what it's saying it says diversity is important in today's workplace because it helps us learn from each other and understand that everyone is unique and special in their own way which is a crazy way to start an article like this right the only way the only reason why diversity is good is to help us learn surely workplace diversity shouldn't be about learning workplace diversity should be about getting the best people working for you no matter where they are who they are so that it can benefit your bottom line right it's capitalist thing it's not about learning and cultures and understanding what fucking pounded yam is and shit it's about sales it's about making money so the idea is hey let's not limit ourselves to caucasian white girls let's open the studio to everybody who has a love for fashion who has experience so that they can contribute and that they can help us sell more magazines which will then allow us to you know um, make more money or get more ad space whatever it may be but it should always be about money it shouldn't be about learning about people's cultures that's fucking crazy in my opinion Diversity is important for several reasons, both in society and various contexts, such as workplaces, education, and communities. Here are some key reasons why diversity is important. It enhances creativity and innovation, allegedly. Better decision-making. Encourages learning and personal growth. Improved performance. Fosters inclusivity and social cohesion. Enhances adaptability and resilience. Reflects and serves the needs of the diverse populations. Economic benefits. Um, and nine, social justice and equity. Businesses should never be in the business of social justice and equity, really and truly, especially those high fashion um, brands and those fashion houses. They should be in the business of selling clothes. They should be in the business of making beautiful clothes that people want to buy and selling tons of them so they can make more beautiful clothes and keep selling them so you can keep buying them. It shouldn't be about equity and all this sort of nonsense. If anything, the most thing a brand should do is reflect the customers. I think that's one of the things that used to annoy me early on about Vetamon when it first kind of got popping. It was very evident that black people and Asian people gravitated to Vetamon aggressively. I know I did. I bought some of the first fucking triple S's. I bought loads of stuff from there very early on. Um, brand new. Jeremy you know I spent a lot of money on that fucking shit when it first dropped. Um, and clearly, you know, that was the main target. That was the main audience that I saw at Vetamon daily. It was only me and Asian people that live around me. Cool. It was really annoying when you saw the runway and you just saw, you know, obviously them as friends and their click and their crew at the time. And it wasn't reflective of the fan of the fan base or the flipping buyers or the customers. Sorry, that was the only thing that kind of annoyed me. Like, why are you just completely ignoring a huge part of your fan base and not reflecting on the runway? Because that's just an easy sell when you see some guy that looks like you or whatever on the runway looking something cool. It just might click in your brain. Some people are a bit simple minded that way. I know I am. Oh, shit. I could wear that, too. That color would work good on my skin as well. Boom all of a sudden now you're you're keeping an eye out for a neon green hoodie it doesn't really take much but the idea of just hiring black or brown or women or whatever it may be just because of their race is ridiculous you should obviously be open to anybody especially if they're in walking distance or whatever to your fucking workplace but it shouldn't be just be hiring based on color of the skin alone that's not how businesses should work in my personal opinion and like i said when it comes to fashion it's tricky because fashion inherently is women dominated right there's a lot of women working in this industry or in fashion or in general so how do you then pass and how do you decide how to kind of allocate these roles if there is an issue with representation and diversity or whatever how do you address that because there's many women working on levels underneath being the creative directors at fashion brands i don't think all fashion brands are helmed or led by white gay men I, I don't believe that. I refuse to believe that. I know there's a lot of white gay men working in fashion, but I don't think they dominate it. I think there's a lot more women working in fashion than there are white gay men. So that's a fact. How do you address the balance? Because there's guys like myself, if I want to be a creative director of a fashion brand, what then do I have to do? I have to wait fourth, fifth in line behind everybody else because I just happen to be a man and I happen to be straight and I happen to be black. Like it's just annoying. Do you know what I mean? Um, so obviously, I think the issue is more so with the company's inability to uh, kind of um, identify talent. Because look at all the hires they've done in these houses so far. They're obvious. Of course, Matthew Williams is going to get a job at a big luxury house because look what he's doing with Alix on his own, a startup company. 
of course a, a house would want to take a chance on him because he has huge pull the association with Virgil the Kanye thing it makes sense of course Virgil will get the big job at Louis Vuitton at that time of course of course Pharrell would get it even though maybe on paper you know design chops he doesn't have it because of his pull and his cachet it makes complete sense but again they're the obvious hires they're not making clever hires and I think nowadays as well don't be a, don't be fooled I don't think they're hiring these people from behind the scenes. Obviously, you know, maybe excommunicating Demna because of the great work he did at Vetemar. But I don't think they're hiring a lot of these people behind the scenes who are quote unquote unknown because they are somehow now plugged in and more aware of what's going on. No, no, no. They're only doing this because I think because of the financial constraints. Most likely because of the economy being the way it is, it's probably way more economically sound to hire people from in-house who are basically working in the industry or whatever it may be then hiring some big glitzy person um you know a famous streetwear person who's probably represented by caa or wme who's going to demand a crazy contract crazy working conditions it's just too much so you'd rather hire somebody in the industry who's going to be happy to have the job who's going to feel like you know very it's going to be feel validated for being seen by one of these big houses and it's going to take whatever deal that crosses their table that's probably why they're doing it so it's definitely a cost-effective thing mask as oh we are now keeping abreast of the fashion industry and seeing who's around it's not it's not that so unfortunately this is a very complex issue it's not very easy to just say hey let's give this person that person a job it's just a complex issue that's hard to really address but i feel like the only way to really address it is to scrutinize the industry and scrutinize these big brands and tell them hey try thinking outside the box don't go for the easy option try and hire people based on the talent that you see even if they don't have a big following or whatever it may be take a chance on somebody because that might be the next big person that you might stumble upon who might be the next Sarah Berzin for instance right take a chance take a punt but they don't usually they try and go for the easy safe method that ticks all the boxes and then continue on that's the issue that we have at the moment but I went to read some comments here from people as well because they had some interesting things to say regarding this whole issue so let's read some of the granary comments here on here to see what the vibe is saying um um, one person said the following what i find interesting is that when i studied fashion men were by far the minority so that they make up so that they make up the majority in her positions is questionable seems we're still within the headspace that men are perceived as being more capable to lead and take reins than women you know help i don't think that's true but there's also a refusal to accept that women majority women offices are usually not usually can sometimes be a very different experience to work in than an office that's led by men it's just what it is we don't know why that is maybe it's just temperament whatever but there is that might go into some of the thinking behind it but i don't think it's like that to be fair i think it's probably a lot more complex than that but this is a good um sort of point to sort of jump off from another one imagine women not giving a chance to design clothes for women true another one women are overrepresented in fashion at every level so with all due respect put up or shut up i don't think that makes any sense to be fair um you know you can't just tell every woman to start a brand brands are expensive to start they're not easy to start and it shouldn't be a requirement to get a big creative job really and truly if you know what you're doing especially within fashion in terms of design you should be more than likely especially with the teams that they have internally you should be able to be given a chance at these places to try to do something because most likely you're going to smash it um, especially if you have all the tools given at your disposal another one says sean is lovely give him some love he needs our support agree another one says good to see we're all listening and learning i'm so unbelievably bored of this another one saying it's everywhere and it starts already from school on my year at CSM at MA, we were more women than men in the class. For the final show out of the 15 collections that were picked up by to be shown, only okay, this is a bit crazy. If this is true, this is crazy. On my year, one year of CSM at the MA, they say, we were more women than men in the class. For the final show out of the 15 collections they presented that were picked up by the show, only three were women. I was astonished then, but am I surprised now? Okay, that is crazy, but then the, res the retort back could be, were the women good though it's objective i know but were they were they commercially sound did they fit the theme i don't know whatever the term is were they good i don't really know but that's a crazy thing to say um and comment to make there because that definitely shows you maybe some of the issues that are going on there um while i do enjoy a lot of their work i have to say that the women deserve to be in the in these roles they are not less talented 
they are just anonymous so we don't know what they are capable of another one says white men for spring groundbreaking another one you saying that when you're white as well is funny uh, another one says not to be forever contrarian but even in the relative contemporary terms concerning who has been most influential in revolutionizing fashion ray Kawakubo, andy lemuster jill sander by leaps and heaps and bounds and valerie hash rodate margaret howe oh margaret howe the legend um not even to mention the actual massive stadium sellers such as stella mccartney vera wang donna karen D diane von frostberg does this mean does this meme appear completely one-sided? Absolutely. Is it true? Yes. However, let's not discount that many women who are just as important as their male counterparts, if not more influential. And I haven't even said Chanel. Even in fashion, appearance isn't everything. The vast majority of photography editors are all top magazines are women and have been for the last 30 years and still mostly hire men. It's not a singular gender issue. It's interwined. Exactly. That's the term. It's interwined. It's a complex interwined issue. That's the one I was trying to look for the word. Thank you for this user. And I can't wait to see the next generation of incredible designers who also happen to be women, not quote unquote women designers, but um, just amazing designers who, despite the state of affairs at Kering, show us a new path forward, such as Jill Sander did at the height of the 90s, Ray Kalkuba did in the 80s, and Andrew Musta did up until she realized social media had ruined fashion and departed at the correct moment, for sure another one says continuing this perverse fantasy dystopian world where white men dictate what and how women dress while never walking in the woman's shoes true but they do it really well to be fair and fashion you know just because you don't wear heels doesn't mean you can't design great heels you know it's a very straight it's a really strange way to look at things but hey what do i know six pictures of the same man that's funny and everyone says they were really they really said copy paste six times <laughs> i love this whole like self-hating white thing is all happening it's really funny um yes i just i was just thinking about this today thank you for calling this out when i studied in middlesex men made up of 20 percent of the graduating class but year after year appointment after appointment all the new creative directors are men how is it possible that all just happen to be more talented than all the women who work 10 15 years in industry this is fucking sexist i literally cannot tell at first if this photo was all the same man is it is the fashion industry sexist i can't believe that to be fair male models get paid less women models get paid more the industry is dominated by women but just the top jobs happen to go to most mostly men i don't know why that is maybe there's an issue with a lot of women maybe not wanting to go for those jobs maybe there's not a lot of women designers maybe um i don't know there must be something going on i don't know it's complex i don't know what the issue is but i can't sit here and be say with a straight face i agree that the fashion industry is sexist because it sounds similar to like people who go to Bergheim get turned down and then say oh Bergheim is racist or it's homophobic it's like just because you didn't get in does it mean that it's racist or homophobic right like really and truly and also we're also complaining about the top one five percent jobs out there right we're not complaining about just getting your foot in the door and being a part of the industry and working as a seamstress or a you know a pattern cutter and stuff we're talking about being the creative director of these big houses where you're you're on like million dollar salaries or hundreds of thousands of pounds this is not some minor thing so it's a very small amount of people that get a job anyway do you know what i mean so i don't know if i agree with that sexist thing we agree or oh, sorry we continue here it says this is the very this is the very picture about the society we live in no space for women and diversity people again you know black men fails falls just underneath the woman when it comes to the hierarchy of diversity shame but it is what it is another one it's a white man's world still emphasis on men and white another one says is that mr ton Okay. another one says thank you for talking about this something many women in the industry have been feeling for a while now we've regressed there were many more female leaders 10 years ago yet they hire women with more experience than them to their right hand to do most of the work for the fraction of the pay and also maybe it's a support thing maybe there's a lack of support in terms of buying in terms of sales whatever it may be for certain women brands so that's why maybe some of the women designers out there don't get thrust into these big roles because they don't have the numbers to back it up maybe i don't know maybe that could be a thing i'm just throwing things out there and thinking on my feet another one says that last month the caring foundation hoopla about supporting women is just like the sustainability initiative a, fa a facade of course it is, but it's always been sit there thinking these brands care about sustainability come on bro 
Let's be serious. Another one. Just sad. Diversity and inclusivity are a facade, a facade, sorry, and a PR big gimmick. Another one says zero surprises this. Um, we Where I work in the last year, I heard a white gay guy referred to as a diversity hire. <laughs> I love fashion, man. Fashion is so... Fashion is the most fetishistic, if, that, if that's a word, industry in the world. Like they will prop you up if you happen to be a particular shade of black and look a particular way and really kind of use that to their advantage and you will use it to your advantage. But when you hear it said sometimes it can sound so weird. Like it's like that it's like that famous Tommy Hill figure runway show where they had the models dress up in like you know, fake afros and all this shit. And I've heard beforehand that they were telling him in the back, oh, like blacking it up and stuff, you know, start doing all that nigga shit. I don't know, whatever they were telling him in the background, some weird racial shit. It, you know, they basically told him to perform like monkeys or whatever it may be. That's how weird the industry can get. So just imagine you're in the fashion industry and someone says you're the fucking quote unquote exotic diversity hire because you're happen to be Hispanic and gay. <laughs> i love it oh it's so fucking horrible it says the bar is not even on the floor it's buried under the basement exactly oh my god a white gay man referred to as a diversity hire <laughs> is hilarious this is so beautiful and let me tell y'all why there are countless black and asian brown and indigenous designers who could use all y'all support diversity equity and inclusion work is not about forcing companies to see the value of diversity through leadership um in fact is not about forcing okay in fact a company at its core must decide to, to value embrace and champion core values around deie i don't know what that means diversity oh diversity and inclusion um that being said there's clearly a lack of leadership diversity here and this gives us invaluable in insight into what Alexander mcqueen and upper management really values you know what's funny though there was that rumor that was going around that Alexander McQueen, sorry, that Sarah Berta Alexander McQueen told um, Mara Loa that she wanted her to replace her at McQueen. And some people online actually thought that was going to happen. Bless, bless people's naivete, bless people's um, optimism to really think that they were going to hire <laughs> Mara Loa for that job. That would be obviously the best one to do. It would be fun. It's kind of forward thinking, right? It's, it's a bit of a risk right like there's probably a lot of um there's a lot there's probably a lot about her that kind of resonates with fucking mcqueen and it would go in a whole different uh, direction it would actually be a good hire but lol i think it did have the foresight to do something like that never happening um all that being said the comment says here to continue demand nothing from Alexander mcqueen and share your grievances it's our job and cons to as consumers to support the brands that actively embrace dei in fashion this goes beyond models makeup artists and hairdressers executive leadership and creative direction should also be highly diverse Let's stop begging in historically white institutions to include us and turn our attention to designers emerging who reflect us. We can't cling to oppressive systems while also trying to destroy and deconstruct them. We must, no matter how, how painful or chic, let it go. That's a, that's a good statement, to be fair. Support the ones that are actually doing the work, you know, but people aren't going to do that. They're going to, you know, the, people like the validation and, the, um, you know, whatever it may be from buying the brands that everybody knows, to be honest, unfortunately. Emerging diverse designers, di um, diverse our support, deserve our support sorry um a social media capital and our dollars let's divest from companies that continue to miss the mark and can tune into the fashion houses and designers who are getting it right whatever we put our attention towards mag uh, magnets uh, magnetizes let's magnetize those people and companies that are getting right good comment to be fair i see where it's coming from but again this is living in um, narnia that's not really going to happen i think by the time that new Alexander mcqueen collection drops and it's hard everyone's going to be sucking them off again and we'll forget all about this and that last one now it says so shocking and not surprising i'm pretty sure that if you look at the scholarships the awards the funding the press and the opportunities an industry full of women yet so overlooked it's not about the men not being talented or hard working it's just you need to be five times more to get a look in welcome to my world as a minority you don't get the opportunities that most people get you always have to be five times more sometimes 10 times more better than the next man to get any chance welcome to my life then let's not be surprised when women quit bashing their heads against a brick wall um it's the last one last one it says it's also a question of social impact from women their customers being clothed and dressed by men are we just being catered to um for the female gaze um, how about we look at fashion for the female body from the lens of a female lens from a female eye that's true that's true 
that's true as well but hey what can we do it's a complex issue i don't really know how to sort it obviously the best way to go about it in the end will probably be to have a colorblind society where you just kind of give people jobs based on the character of them based on their character and their talent that's obviously not going to happen but that will be the ideal place to get to because when you start going down the inclusion diversity list and way it gets very murky very quickly and it can lead to some unfortunate circumstances case in point the tremaine emery and um, position at fucking supreme you know it was kind of a diversity higher and it went disastrously wrong and you know that's partly one of the you know um faux pas of going down that route to be honest but hey what do i know <laughs>